Hello, I'm a BX Toy Cat, and welcome back to the video. Today I'm sharing with you all 10 ways you can make blocks float in Minecraft. And obviously, most of you are aware that blocks kind of float by themselves. Like, most blocks aren't affected by gravity, so it can kind of float, like this stone or like this crafting table. However, there are three blocks in Minecraft the anvil, the sand, and the gravel, which actually won't float by themselves and are affected by gravity, which is why it looks extra cool and special when you do something like make this gravel statue, which is meant to be deliberately bad, by the way. But yeah, a lot of people were surprised and asked how I could do this, and I thought, you know what, this is a learning moment. Let's teach you 10 ways you can actually, you know, make blocks like gravel sand and anvils float and that's what I'm doing with today's video. Hopefully you'll learn something about the way this works and stuff like that. If you do all enjoy the video, like and let me know because it helps out the channel and let's know you do like learning how to make blocks flow. But let's just get straight into it with the very obvious one which is the best one uh, for most building purposes. How do you make blocks flow in Minecraft? Most of the time people are going to use string. So string is the best uh, way to make blocks flow because it does count as a full block so that means that the block above it won't fall down if you place it in the right way which means that you can do stuff like you know place string below your build and make it so it's essentially floating with no one knowing how it's done because you know a lot of people can see the string if they get right up close to it but from even this distance you can only just about see the string if you're really looking and from over here it's invisible entirely so yeah you can make again a statue do anything like that even with uh, you know your sand or your gravel you can make it so that this stuff floats essentially using string which is pretty darn awesome and again because string doesn't need to be attached to anything else like yeah it doesn't have to float by anything or anything else you can use it pretty easily so yeah the reason this works is because tripwire block, uh, blocks take up a full kind of block thing and you can place blocks above it like that and because these can be done midair it's a pretty uh, you know awesome to look at. So yeah, the second example of this is just the same thing, but with a more visible block. I think this is better for maybe like a trophy if you want to have like an anvil look cooler, because again, if you have a half stab down there, this technically takes up the full block below it. It means the anvil can't fall down anymore because the anvil can't fall into a half block. And you end up with this thing right here, where there's a giant gap between the anvil and the thing, which is, uh, you know, it, it looks pretty nice there, but it looks even better when you use redstone repeaters, because again, redstone itself, as well as redstone repeaters, can do the exact same thing. And the, the thing I like about this is because it, it is the fact that the redstone looks like it's somehow holding it up with its magic redstone powers, or alternatively, you can actually protect your redstone by doing this too. So you get two things done at once. You can make an weird, you know, awesome looking redstone, but also uh, make it so that, you know, your redstone is shielded from outside eyes, which I kind of like personally, because again, place a block on each side and suddenly it's all entirely done. So yeah, that's a pretty cool thing you can do with redstone. Make it hold up your sand blocks or use your sand blocks to hide the redstone, whichever way uh, around you want to do it. Uh, next up here, we have the torch, which is surprising to a lot of people because I know, um, you know, most people know the torch as being a cool way to actually, you know, break a lot of sand all at once. So let's say you have a desert, like I've been doing recently. A lot of people know that you can use the torch just like this to actually make all of the, uh, you know, uh, sand go away. But the cool thing about the torch is if you place it the other way around, if you have the torch first, then the blocks on top of it, or even if you've got fast enough reflexes, because I know, wait, let, let's let's try this. If you have if you have a tall enough stack and you have just the right reflexes, which we'll try just now, you can actually place it just in time. And uh, I didn't do it right there, but you can actually make it so the, uh, you know, it just replaces the bottom block, which is, uh, you know, pretty interesting to look at. But yeah, for now, let's just show you that you can in fact stack on top of it. So let's just have some gravel, then some sand. And just like that, the torch will hold it up, which is counterintuitive to a lot of people who know how that technique works. So, yeah, that's the fourth way of doing things. Let's move on to the fifth one here, which is going to be... Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, just as a fun little, uh, you know, kind of uh, side on from this, if you do decide to use string, you can actually make blocks go through the string or through anything else like that, because the funny thing about if the block is transparent like this is the sand can go straight through it. So just like that, the sand's going to go straight through the string. It has a visual glitch as it does so. Uh, but, yeah, that means that you can have... Uh, if you place sand there, it, it goes on top of it. If you place sand above it, it actually goes straight through which is really interesting and bizarre the way that works, but it is a thing that happens. So yeah, if you want to confuse people even more once they know this stuff, there's another tip that might help you. But let's just move quickly onto the fifth uh, where you can make blocks flow, which is using carpets. So yeah, carpet's colorful, it's great for having on your house, and it also means that you can have your anvil or your gravel, uh, your sand or gravel float just like that, which is pretty nice to look at personally. Uh, and again, it's another giant gap between this and the thing. Most people know that it's because the carpet's there, but some people will be like, whoa, look at the magic you're performing there, Toy Cat. And if that's what you want from your life, then that's what you'll get with uh, this. Uh, the sixth way you can do this is with using uh, buttons just like this. So yeah, I like buttons um, in particular because again, if you have your anvil below there, one, it makes your anvil look more high tech, like ooh, there's a button, I wonder what it does to the anvil. But two, you can have a redstone thing hooked up to there, so that's pretty nice like that. And uh, three, it's again, it's one, of the, it's one of the smallest blocks, so it means that there's the giant, uh, you know, one of the biggest gaps, which makes this look particularly cool. It also works with wall buttons in case you want to do it that way. So if we take this button up and then we put it on the wall, so let's just place it there. Uh, it also works just like that, so if you want to have an anvil floating above something, that's a pretty interesting way to do that. So you have like your, your button to uh, activate something, be in there, and make it so you have to go right underneath an anvil, which is pretty scary when you're pressing, you know, a redstone circuit. So again, just some ideas you might want to play around with. Uh, let's move on to the next one that might inspire you, because it is snow. So be cautious of it over here, so 
we have to be like extra cautious here because uh, basically it will just remove snow. But if you place it like that, then boom, again, another giant gap might be useful for something. But I think what's more interesting is if you use six or seven layers of snow instead of, you know, just one, because then if you place it, you get this tiny gap between the sand and the snow, which is one confusing because like, why won't the sand for that last little bit? Again, most people know. But the other cool thing about this is that it's a tiny gap, which can be used for very specific vision. So if you have a certain number of snow layers down here, then you can see through the gap, but no one else can. Like without using, you know, slabs or, you know, jumping at just the right angle, you actually can't see through that gap just right, which is really, really interesting uh, for other people to see. So again, if we go maybe far enough back, we can just about do it. And the other cool thing about this is you means you can attack people, if you, if you do this right anyway, uh, just about through that, which is pretty darn uh, interesting. So yeah, if you want to have the tiniest like vision slip, boom, just like that, you can see you can fire right through it. Then uh, using uh, six layers of snow and then, you know, like sand, gravel and anvil is a pretty interesting way to do that if you ask me. Actually, it probably has to be sand or gravel because otherwise you're going to be able to see through the anvil. But yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Let's move on to the next one here, which is going to be the rail. So yeah, obviously everyone has rails in their world. So if you want to place your stuff, you place it on the rail and suddenly uh, when you go through it, like, you know, on a minecart, you can still go uh, through it just fine. But again, it's the same thing with the redstone where it hides this, but also makes it look better. Might be something you want to consider. So uh, next up, we've got flowers and or dead bushes. Again, flowers are interesting because it looks crazy strong, you know, the fact that a flower can hold that up, or even a uh, flower, if you want to, can hold up your anvil. Wait, let's do this just now. Boom, look, that's a tulip holding up the anvil. Again, might be something that can impress some friends, but also works with, like, dead bush and stuff, if you do it the right way. So, again, might might be something you want to consider if you've got a very herbal look for your world, or maybe look at this and you're just like, that's kind of silly toy cat. Whichever way, um, maybe uh, this last one here is the best one, because signs, obviously, the same way they can hold up water or anything else like that, they can also hold up your uh, anvils, which, again, I think if you've got a whole row of anvils just like that, looks pretty interesting to see. So, uh, yeah, have you always have floating anvils, floating gravel, floating sand? Hopefully you learned the pro tip in today's video, which is use, uh, you know, use string most of the time, but hopefully you also learned nine other ways you could do it that you might not have previously known about. Hope this video inspired you in some way. If it did, I'd very much appreciate a like on the video because it helps out the channel a lot. And let's know you do like this sort of thing. Share if you really liked it and subscribe if you're new around here because I make videos like this one every single day on my channel. And if you subscribe, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. So, goodbye everyone.